Hey guys, we've got news on Global for the Chinese New Year um, coming on January 27th. Uh, and this week to discuss the news with me, to no one's surprise, is Chow's biggest fan, Cotton C. You can say hello, Cotton. I think most people would disagree. He always says he's Chow's biggest fan. Who does? Exactly. <laughs> So it is Neovision's Divine Beast Chow with a rerun of all the previous units, including Shui Yi. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But for now, let's focus on Chow. So tell me, Cotton, how hyped are you about Chow coming back to Global? You were giving me flick about this right before we started recording. <laughs> I just saw the thumbnail on the video. I didn't need to watch the video. I didn't need to know what he does. All I know is I see Chow, I'm going to pull. You are going the to pull. That he's, yes, his vision card is called Good Boy. That's like, why won't you pull for that? It is, it is. So Chow's Good Boy, or Best Boy. Oh, look at best this, card. You got it better. wrong. You don't even know your unit. <laughs> See, this is what this is what I mean. I don't I didn't watch the video. I just saw his start and I went, I'm pulling. Indeed. So I'm probably gonna pull too, you know, just early warning. People people usually ask me, are you gonna pull? So the answer is probably yes. But let's go ahead and talk about the unit real quick before we discuss the rest of the guys. So the step up is um, a discounted step up. It turns out Chow is a limited unit. I was kind of unsure on that from Shelly's video if he was going to be a limited or a permanent unit. It seems like he is limited time, so get him this, this next two weeks or miss him. Um, so it's 32000 for the guaranteed pity. It's 12 k per lap with a free 10 steps is the pity. Um, so that's pretty good. So, so do you plan to go all the way, Cotton? Are we going to EX3 Chow? Or are you just getting him to be like have him in your inventory and that's gonna be good enough for you? What are you thinking? Jinx me. Don't jinx me. Don't jinx my boots. <laughs> Please don't jinx it. So it, it it is a limited time unit, meaning EX3 is I mean it's not cheap or anything, but it is a lot easier than premiums, a lot easier than permanent units. Um, so we're going to get, assuming you go to the Pity, that's 32k, you're getting a copy of Chow, you're getting 50 fragments from the Shard, um, the Shard uh, shop, you're getting 100 fragments from VIP, you're getting 50 fragments from the 5k bundle, you're getting 30 fragments from Login, and you're getting um, 20 fragments from the Lapis 2200 deal. So I, if I remember correctly, that gets you all the way until 50 away from EX3. So as long as you pull at least one copy on the way, that's EX3 for with the extra bundle cost. It's, uh, it's about don't jinx me. It's about 40k. Please don't, jinx me. Please don't jinx me. Well, don't jinx me either cuz it is a Clash of Wills unit. It is limited, so I'm going to I'm going to hopefully go for EX3, but you know, it depends on how the polls go on Monday but or not Monday, on it's, Thursday. Uh, is it me? Just, just one like observation. Is it me or the steps cheaper this round? It is. It is. It is cheaper. It was um it was thirty six k for like Lena and Dorgan, I believe, because because they're permanent units. Uh, collaborations and limited time seasonals get a small discount. So for him, it's going to be only thirty two k for the pity. But of course, yeah. if you go thirty two k, you're on step two. That's really tempting to go 4K more for two more pulls and a guaranteed Neo. Like, it is designed to, like, you just can't stop. You can't stop at 10 pulls. You got to go to 12 if you go that far. <laughs> um, so here is the unit. It's true Brave Shift. He can go back and forth at will. His base form is a tank, healer, and buffer. And the shift form is a pure mage. Now, we do... Um, know from the previous video with Shelly that he's a light element locked mage in the DPS form and the base form. We didn't really get a ton of info on the base form from Shelly in the video, so we know just from the icon that's, you know, buffer, tank, and healer. It's all we really know. And then um, some previewed skills. We'll go to the TMRs and all in a moment. So uh, he boosts his LB damage. He boosts LB for the party with the Magnus. And then the base form is, you know, a stat buffer. And it reduces damage taken by fairies and beasts, which is very clearly designed specifically for this Clash of Wills. Kind of like Maeve was Dragon and Beast for Treshin. Um, Phil's morale, morale Gauge as well. So, uh, let's see. We're going to talk about the card in a moment. And then the STMR is really interesting. It's 100% LB damage and then 70 Spirit and 5 LB per turn. So the Spirit and LB per turn... Um, well, the LB per turn is nice, but the Spirit... You know, for most units, other than, like, 
Shui Yu and probably Chow himself is kind of Shui Yu. Shui Yu. Shui, Shui Yi. Is that how it said? Okay. Yeah. Shui Yi. Um, other than her, this is going to be mostly kind of whatever. Even on like uh, Summoner Yuna, it's not super good because Summoner Yuna caps her LB damage super easily. Like she needs Esper stats, not more LB damage. So this is really specialized, but it is 100%. Um, <laughs> it is 100% LB damage, which is still good even on non-spirit units. So what do you think about this? Um, STMR, and this is like power creep. Like JP doesn't have anything like. Let me correct myself. I think I, I know JP yeah, has I heard it. the musical Moogle. Yes, it does have the the musical Moogle. For people that aren't aware, that was like a special gift unit for people that went to the the, the live action musical in Japan. Unfortunately, it was canceled really early. I think because of the start of COVID. So there's only like approximately 200 or 300 players that actually got tickets before it was canceled. So almost no one on JP has the musical, the musical Moogle. So even though it does exist, it kind of almost doesn't on JP. <laughs> so, I mean, on one hand, like everyone can get it. You don't have to buy a ticket to some specific musical. On the other hand, this is very clearly trying to bait people into pulling for a limited unit. It is. It does seem like it's always the limited units that have the good LB damage. Sora, Hawkeye, Zoma, oh. and now um, and now Chow. Like, if you want the big LB damage, you got to go for the limited times. <laughs> and then, um, and then the TMR is a shield. Uh, this is like you know whatever. It's a it's a shield. It's it's fine. But like really, who cares? Um, I will I will say right now, just a little little pet peeve of mine. That Chow is being, you know, marketed as a DPS unit in the shift form as a mage, but his TMR is a shield. And as everyone knows, or maybe everyone doesn't know, uh, shields will nerf your damage because it cuts your weapon in peril in half. So this is a little bit irritating to me that they're selling a DPS unit with a shield as a TMR. Like it should not be a shield because that's going to cut your damage in half. Your in peril damage in half, not your total damage. It'll cut the damage from the in peril. And half, and I'm pretty sure Shali said on the video, Chow was getting a staff in peril. I think, or maybe that was players. Players saying that. I don't know. Uh, the question would be like this: If he's designed well, he wouldn't need his, uh, his. He wouldn't have a, a very useful TMR ability in his shield form, right? So he wouldn't have to use his shield. Otherwise, it would be just forcing people to go all the way to his STMR and use that instead, because you know, his TMR will like cut his damage. That is true. Maybe the TMR is just designed for the base form only, which is a tank, and that would that would be a valid reason. Um, so that that would be fine. And then, then the shift form is designed for STMR only. Um, that is very true. So that is certainly possible. So maybe maybe I'm being too critical potentially. <laughs> um, but we'll see. And then because there's no more news about it, I guess we'll talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, I, already, I already forgot how to say it, Cotton. The, the water fish. <laughs> I don't, the water I, fish in the room, yeah. Uh, Shei Yu, was that, was that it? Was that it, Shei Yu? Closer. Shui, Shui Yi. Shui Yi, okay. So, I've been seeing in Discord, on Reddit, everywhere, players have been so hyped to get her EX2 buffs, her upgrades, her something, this event, and she is getting nothing whatsoever. She is being completely and utterly neglected. So how do you feel about this? Do you even have her as a unit? I have, I have her two. I don't feel anything for her because it's this child's New Year. Oh, so 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 child, the child hype is drowning out your salt for yeah. She Yi. Um, for me, I'm a little disappointed. I gotta be honest here. Um, I've used her a few times in the past just for you know the sake of using her. Um, like I, I killed genies with her. I think I used her on a uh, on a Dark Visions boss kind of recently. Um, so I, I like the unit. I do have her at EX2. I was looking forward to her EX buffs to make her, you know, more relevant because she is kind of underpowered. She just doesn't have the passives she needs. Her damage is relatively low. Even if you whale her out, the damage is still pretty low. And she's getting, like, nothing. I'm I'm really disappointed in this. i got to be honest here. Uh, like, I wasn't expecting her to be all of a sudden top of the meta. Um, but I figured she'd get something like Ibar or Eldrin or just something to update her to make her a little more current. And she is just being skipped. I feel especially bad 
because a lot of players have been saying they've run her in the shard dungeon for two weeks in preparation of this, and that has been just a slap in the face, complete waste. Like players that ran her in the shard dungeon, you just wasted a slot for two weeks in the shard dungeon. I feel it's really bad. Thankfully, I had her ex2. Actually, she's ex2 because of the, I did run her in the shard dungeon like a year ago. I can't really yeah, complain. I, mean, I, I can't really good. complain about that. Yeah, she was about decent a year ago. Yeah, she was. She was okay on her release. And okay, so I, I did get use out of her back in the day. You know, she killed the Iron Giant trial in like one turn back when it was new. Stuff like that. Or two turns, I think it was. Um, yeah, so... Still, I was really looking forward to her upgrades. Or maybe a New Visions Awakening for the one of the older units or something. Mm -hmm. Like, no one is getting anything. And that feels that feels pretty bad. But we're not going to dwell on the negative. I'll just call that out, that I am pretty disappointed. I mm -hmm. wish they'd do better. Hopefully, what's our next global exclusive holiday coming up? Is there one before the anniversary? Um, we don't really have global exclusive Easter, do we? I guess um, I guess um, Esther and Sylvie were, were Easter units, Sylvie, weren't they? Yeah. Um, wait, Valentine's? Or Valentine's Day? Oh, yeah, we had... Um, uh, I forget we had the that, 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 that one unit. Uh, Cupid, uh, Cupid Artemidas, Ar uh, Ar yeah. Ar Artemius, or Ar Artemius, I don't know, the Archer. <laughs> and, Do you actually get a five-star Valentine's unit, or is it just the four-star Um, uh, No, it was just the four-star, Cupid Artemius, and I think there was a three-star version as well for Valentine's, I forget. Luna, something Luna? Yes, yes, it was like, it was like a Valentine's Luna, I forget the exact name, you're right. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully we can get something... Like a New Visions Awakening or EX buffs or something for units coming up, or maybe some maybe something for like you know Sylvie or Esther or whatever. We'll see. That's in the future. So back to the current week. Like we mentioned earlier, we've got the best boy Chow Vision card. So it gives a little bit of resistance, Spirit with a staff, and 500 flat Spirit. So overall, I mean, it's a decent card. It's a decent card. Uh, it's. I kind of wish. This is, this is where it's a little bit tricky for me, as um, the Crescent card gives double hand with Spirit. This mm -hmm. gives 500 flat. So I guess usually, especially if you have um, uh, Mermaid Freesia's STMR, this one's probably going to be better. But if you're not capped on Spirit double hand, you might get more out of Crescent's card. But either way, mm -hmm. uh, um, seems good. It's a good card. Is that our only card for the, the week? It is. There's a chow there on the cut. It is. Uh, Ch chow is replacing the little golden dragon statue. <laughs> he's like trying. To, is, is he like trying to hide or something? Like he's like sweating. Isn't because... he a guardian dog or something? So he'd be like, a, a, what, a animated or a live version of those guardian statues. Oh, is that what he is? I'm actually not super familiar not with sure. like the the story of the the Chinese New Year guardian spirits and all. I know like there's a whole you know backstory with that. I don't really know it, but uh. uh no, second look of the VC, he's replacing it. The person in the back there looks a bit confused. <laughs> like, get off, get off my porch. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the regular event for the for the week is um, Elemental Battle, the Great Tiger Spirit. Uh, say it for me, Cotton. Shui, say who? Shui who? The blue tiger. He looks pretty cool. I gotta be honest here. This water he, tiger actually is water tiger. Water tiger? Okay, he looks he looks awesome. If he's a water tiger, why has he got like uh lightning? It's special, it's special effects. Lightning bolt lightning bolts <laughs> coming out of him. But he's a beast and fairy, and you get some special items. I actually didn't browse this in advance. We're gonna look at it together real quick. So the upgraded version is 165 spirit. Uh oh, it gives passives exclusive to Chow. Oh, okay. Hold down. Okay, I approve. Oh, ugh, I'm not loving this it gives chain cap up meaning chow's gonna need the chain cap boost um i'd rather use like my stmr mm -hmm. spears instead of this one but well maybe it's not actually it's pretty high spirit 165 spirit mm -hmm. uh it gives oh when using a shield well we can't do that we already talked about why yeah. um yeah but it's just flat spirit so it can compensate it's just flat it's just like a percentage spirit so you can't compensate it elsewhere yeah but like, come to that's it, true like we don't have many high spirit staffs, do we? Oh, uh, well, we've got a bunch. Um, my the best staff I would say is Lena's STMR. It's I think the same spirit. I think it's one sixty five spirit, and it gives a uh, thirty percent spirit. So that'd be 
I guess I guess this is one I guess it's not that low. 165 is respectable, so that is good. And if it does give him the chain cap up, that's fine. You can you can use the free materia to replace the spirit with like uh what's his name? Yoshikiri's STMR or something. So that's that seems fine. So players, make sure you get this. It does seem like this is probably gonna be his best in slot, I would assume. Um, and what is this necklace we're getting? So let's see, 45 spirit, it's an accessory, it boosts dark resistance. 50% dark resist. It gives MP if you use the set item, which is over here. Oh. LB return, percent spirit, 45. Okay, so this is like more for That's newer. That's a lot of LB return, though. It is, this is like more for newer players. You know, for veterans, you're gonna probably wanna use double Aerith STMR, I would assume, for the, for the really, really high spirit. Uh, but this is this is this is fine for players, you know. It's just not. It gives resistance too, which may or may not matter. Uh, bonus units. We've got the, the typicals. Uh, not really much special here. We've got a daily EX stage, which is who, what, where, when. <laughs> I love I love the global puns. They always do. I love it. I love it. Um. Yeah, it's like where to go? Ah, oh, where to go? They're like, having too much fun, okay? They are, but it, it, it is fun. I, I love these. Uh, so we're also getting special tickets. Um, I'm not sure where these come from. Uh, this Bundle? It might be a bundle. It might be a logger reward. There we go. There we go. Oh, it's a bundle. <laughs> well, depending on the price, it may or may not be good, but you're going to get a 1% chance for Chow and a 2% chance for she, she you. That I'm, I'm never going to get that right. <laughs> Closer, closer. <laughs> um, and you get a, you get one of the random. So this, oh, this this seems this seems not not great. Really not great. Isn't it just like a normal ticket? Don't you have a one percent chance of child anyway on normal tickets? You do, yeah. Normal tickets are one percent, and I think I think the the neo is one percent on normal tickets. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's the bigger chance for Shu Shi Yu, um, but it's. I would just go for the step up instead of this. It depends on the price. Like maybe this is super cheap. If it's super super cheap. Maybe it's worth it. Um, we don't know the price, so we'll see that on Thursday. Uh, I also I, I I usually don't mention bundles on the news videos, but um, this does seem interesting. This one you can get. Uh, oh, I'm just realizing uh, it's going to be a cash bundle because it's it's, it's selling lapis directly. So this is going to be a cash bundle, absolutely. I thought it was, I, I I glanced at it real quick. Okay, when I glanced at it, I saw the chest holding all the lapis, and for some reason, my my mind said. Okay, so this is you exchange the lapis. You put you put the lapis in the chest. You get the tickets. I don't know why I thought that, but no, it's it's selling the lapis. Okay, so this is gonna be a cash bundle. Yeah, but um, which fragments does it give? Oh, that that's but, a lot of child fragments, though. Oh, it even gives child fragments. I didn't even. I thought yeah, you for can, people who pay pay for bundles, like that might be worth it if you are maybe one. Child shot of getting is extreme. Yeah, so depending on the price, if you're if you're yeah. a spender, this could be a good way to get Chow's fragments. Uh, you can I mean, also the carton fragments there. Cart carton fragment. Oh yeah, my God, players! Carton. Players have been complaining so hard about carton, or they either they missed carton, which this won't help you with, or they got carton but didn't get him to ex three. This could be your answer if the players if you, if you ran him in the shard dungeon and he's like. Uh, I think you get two. You can get two tickets. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So if you're a hundred shards away, this could be your answer to solve the carton Please problems. Stop. Buy this for me, thank you. Uh, you should have gone to EX3 in the banner, just like I did. <laughs> I need my carton. Mine is still X2. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're getting chapter one, part three of season four, and did they? They did not tell us the special mm -hmm. item for this this one. Yeah, so in on season four, as you've noticed, um, we get a special item every season four update. Um, so this one, I'm not, I, I can't remember what we get. It might be the special gauntlet for Tyvus, which gives him um, a preemptive AOE attack, which is not really relevant for like trials or dark visions and all. But it's good for farming. You know, it's, uh, Tulian gets one as well. We already got his on global. But Tyvus gets his own version from one of the story updates. I think this is the story update it comes from. I could be mistaken. We'll find out on Thursday. But other than that, you know, story. Stories are cool. And I then mean, what's even cooler? Lapis. More lapis for child. Oh, it is. Yeah, you can clear all that and get the lapis um, to pull on the banners. 
So this um, this month we're getting Clash of Wills, Fragment of the Beast. It's going to be Vestige of the Neon Beast. Now, did I say that right, Cotton? I probably didn't. Did I? Both. Uh, better than your Sway Yu <laughs> So this one is Vulnerable to Blind. Uh, it's weak to fire, water, and light damage. When you hit it with fire, water, light, it becomes more vulnerable to damage from humans, and it deals extra damage to humans. So I've seen some discussion in Discord that's a little bit confusing about what this means. The people were thinking that it means, like, humans are going to be the most MVP against this boss. Um, that doesn't really make a ton of sense. What it's probably going to be is the boss has very heavy human mitigation, just like uh, Treshin had early yeah. mitigation. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going to start with really high human mitigation, and the non-humans will just deal more damage all the time, like Chow, for example, because it's his banner. So Chow is going to be very favorable for this boss. And then when you do the special elements, the human mitigation lowers to where humans can deal more damage but non-humans will be hitting this pretty hard. So some examples are Chow, obviously he's not going to be a human. Um, Nappy is going to be a non-human. Uh, Yigni, Yigni is a spirit as well because he's a, he's a mogul. He'll be doing more damage. Unfortunately, um, Carton is still a human even in werewolf form, so he will not be getting bonuses against Vestige of the Nyan Beast. But he's still going to do his plain old good morale damage. He's still going to be worth it. Like him, Laura Croft are still going to be like MVPs. Don't worry about that. But Wait. yeah, so this is like designed. Ibarra? Um, Ibarra is a demon, but she is locked to uh, dark mm -hmm. and, and lightning. So unfortunately, even though she would be qualified for the non-human bonus, um, she is uh, she is wrong element and she is locked to wrong element. So she cannot come. Uh, it does counter if you, um, if you don't, Deal this for a consecutive turn. So this is basically just, you know, deal, deal the right elements. Uh, and also, it increases damage to against humans. So, meaning, I would assume what this means is uh, because Chow is a magical tank and Chow is not a human, it's probably going to deal high magical damage and Chow is going to mitigate it like a boss. And then if you're covering this with, like, Maeve, Beatrix, General Celeste, etc., um, they're probably going to get hit harder than Chow is. Now, I seriously doubt that it's tuned where they can't survive it. I would just assume that you know Chow is going to be the better option, but not the only option. So actually, you have a point about the tune to be not surviving. Like, if you scroll down, there's a, like a new morale, sorry, a new X condition of whatever you call it. Mm, right here. All the way down. All the way down. Down. So I was I uh, actually here for that. Uh, <laughs> What's it called? The X? There you go, the... No. Uh, what is it? The modifier. There's a new modifier where it reduces your healing. Oh, oh, the, the modifier. Yeah, that is yeah. right. Um, let's, let's, I, 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 I know what you're talking about. Right here. Um, nope, it's not it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, this news is really big. And I, I know what you're talking about. I did read it. And we're, we're, we're spending half the video looking for it. It is in here. But it's around here somewhere. If they put that type, like, I, so what it means that if you want to use that modifier, you basically have to use a non-human tank. Otherwise, it'll be hard, harder to heal up or to survive over the long run. There it is. Okay, S search for uh, the there win. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, new challenge option. Party restoration, negative 50% has been added as a new option. So basically, healing is cut in half if you turn this on. Obviously, if you're going for a high score, you got to turn it on. So, yes, healing has been nerfed. Um, overall, this isn't really a problem if you're bringing a real healer. Because, like, for example, Kresnik heals, you know, 45,000 per cast. He can triple cast. <laughs> so he can heal 120,000. If you reduce that to only 60k, that's totally fine. On the other hand, if you're relying on something like Mechanical Heart or just Regeneration or very, very low healing, um, this might cut it down to be not enough. You know, it really depends on the fight. We've got to see it when it gets here. But yeah, this could potentially be a thing. I actually suggested in previous videos, like, add, like, some excessively high healing reductions, like 95% healing healing reduction, 
which again, a real healer could still power through that. You just stack up spirit, you add things like Lena's TMR for healing modifier increases, and you just go to town on these enormous heals. A real healer could still still deal with that, but you know you couldn't do that with like a support unit. Um, apparently, they're only going with fifty percent. So you know maybe you know it is higher. I think last month. Uh, what was the boss's name? Arboralis mm -hmm. did like a negative 50% as well. It was completely irrelevant. Like you never even noticed it when your provoker got negative 50%. Um, maybe it's going to matter more this time. I kind of hope it does because I, I think I think that's an interesting mechanic, reducing healing. So I kind of I kind of want it to matter more, but um, we'll see. And while we're here, we will talk about this, the morale gauge update. The total morale value has been increased by 50% on Echelon 5. So if you remember last month, the new parameter, um, you had to get... Uh, we figured it out during the event, during you know, testing, data mines, etc. We did find out that to get perfect score on morale gained, you needed 30,000 morale gained. And we know from the morale bar that the morale bar is 20,000 large. So basically, this kind of a little bit solves the problem that players were asking about. It's, you know, it's kind of really obtuse. You can't really tell when you've maxed out your morale score for the actual scoring criteria. Uh, with the morale gauge being 50% bigger, that pretty much means when you hit 200% morale gauge, you have earned enough to get a perfect score on morale gain. So that's pretty nice for players. Um, let's see what else we have going on here. So the morale actions are chance of blinding enemies from the morale bar. This seems a little strange to me from the morale bar. Um, it's unless the boss goes immune after one or two applications. I was just thinking to myself, like you could just equip like rainbow whip on a unit and keep the boss permanently blinded. But he might be kind of like a Mortarum, where after once or twice he goes immune. In that case, you would want... Well, if that's the mm -hmm. case, once again, Kresnik is going to be a huge handicap. <laughs> oh my god. Kresnik and that autocast stupid uh, uh, debuff application. Um, so this may or may not be a problem. I guess, we, I guess we have to see the mechanics, don't we? To know if that's going to matter or not. And then Cleansing Will is uh, remove all debuffs from the party. And then the boss has an AoE break, which is seems like kind of whatever, because you can just, you can just, you know immune that, but it might matter. So then the new gear we're getting... We're going to skip straight, straight to the modifier gear. So the, the, new, the new gear is a hat that... I think it's a hat. It might be a helmet. I don't think we've actually confirmed hat or helmet. But it's a headpiece that gives um, tanking stats... So how do you feel about this cotton? Do you, do you are you happy it's a tank gear? Would you rather it be more DPS stuff? What do you think? Ideally, you will have more. In the best case scenario, having more chain can increase gear would be great because like everyone, all you need want to go through double hand. So having even more chain cap gear could just reduce the need to slot in what lightning's SDMR. Mm hmm. Magistrate. Yeah. Yeah. Th this. This season, you know, I, I did I did notice that immediately. The magisters modifier is absent, so there is no mat there is no magisters for um for the options on the tank gear. So the options we are getting um all all of the gear, just the base effect on the uh, the helm, is one use every five turns. It boosts all resistances. It reduces physical and magical mitigation, and it fills the morale gauge. So this is an active effect instead of the passive effect oh. that. Uh, the, the previous items have, um, which is you know nice. Depending on the percentage, it could be really good. Uh, not not necessarily. I just noticed the physical and magical damage taken is by caster, and I assume the elemental resistance is caster only. Oh, it could be, huh? Hmm, that is true. It, it, it doesn't specify if that's party or caster. Ooh. I mean, the magic damage that. Yeah. Is, well, is, is, it reduces it by caster. Yeah, the physical and magical damage is definitely yeah. caster only. This, the way it's written, it could be. Um, I hope not because that would be a little weird. But I guess that we'll find out on Thursday as soon as the data mine comes out. And then um, all of these special modifiers cost a thousand each, which is a real nice change. You know, last two two seasons, uh, one of them cost two thousand, which was like uh, two hundred 
too expensive. Uh, but these are all 1,000 a piece. Uh, so the modifiers you can choose are Dancer's Tenant, which is 100% passive provoke and 20% evasion. That is amazing. And I'll just say straight up front, this is my favorite of the options. We're going to go over all the options, but I love this option, and I'm going for that immediately on day one. How about you, Cotton? Are you, are you psyched about this, or, or did, are you deciding on one of the other ones that we're going to show in a minute? I mean, there's three different ones here that are just great, and how great it is is situational. Like, the first one here on the screen right now, the one, the passive provoke, it mm. basically means you don't need any Moogle charm. So you have more slots to fill in what resistance, attack, stat, whatever. Mm -hmm. you don't but then the other two, yeah, the other two gives a really chunk of elemental resistance on the head, like mm. ridiculous bad. Yep. Uh, so the other options, um, priest, priest tenant, and priestesses tenant. Uh, one of them is fire, lightning, wind, and light by fifty. The other is the other four: ice, water, earth, and dark. One does charm. One does stop. These are absolutely, certainly great. Um, I'm probably not going to go for these just because they're a little bit more specialized. You know, you always, always want a provoker. You only mm -hmm. sometimes need these resistances. Uh, that being said, there may be a fight where I just need excessive amounts of resistance, and maybe I go and just grab the recipe and swap the crown. It is kind of cool that you can swap them. It, it costs a little bit. You know, you got you to gotta pay the orbs. You got to pay the extra Xenostone to buy the recipe. But the, it's really cool that the option is there to swap them if you need mm -hmm. either a different one or maybe you made the wrong choice. You can still buy the other ones, etc. So these are certainly nice. Um, a little more specialized. I'm probably not going to get these on day one, but if a fight does come up where I need them, I will go and grab them. This one feels like the weakest option to me. Uh, it's mana reduction, MP per turn, and status immunity. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, these like these are all good effects and all, but they're also pretty common and easy to get effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I personally think this one could use a little bit of a buff or something, or maybe it's just, or maybe a price reduction. Like maybe if that one was like two hundred Xenostone or something, then that would be better. But a thousand Xenostone seems a little much for this one. Um, yeah, it's a little much. And then this one, uh, technically speaking, is probably like quote unquote the best in slot because it goes above the cap. It's flat defense and spirit. I'm still going to go for the Passive Provoke Evasion one, even though that one might be redundant in some builds, and this might be better. I can always find a use for Passive Provoke and Evasion. Only sometimes do I need extra defense and spirit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, and, oh, oh, I forgot to mention this. This is awesome. This is awesome. They're selling, um, if you remember, uh, it was like six months ago, maybe longer, they had that Weapon Step Up banner. Uh, some of the options yeah. were like Life for the Purge, etc. These were one of them. Reclaim Serenity and Way of the Samurai are in the the new obnoxious or the the new drop shop. I forget what it's called. The shop. Uh, Way of the Samurai, like it's okay. I'm not buying this. This is not really that great for me. But this one, I talked about it in my STMR video pretty recently. How amazingly good multiple high resistance STMRs are. This gives four resistances at 60%. It also gives defense and spirit. I don't even care about that. I care about four resistances at 60%. I am buying this immediately as soon as I can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this actually costs the new season shops. You actually don't, don't have these in reserve at the moment. But uh, that's good. Also, I should mention... All the fan design units are also being sold in the shop. Uh, obnoxious Blaze Drops. Okay, that, that's the new one. So yeah, so if you don't have any of the fan units or one of the fan units and you want them, here is your option. Special shout out to Kresnik, who is a very, very commonly said unit on my videos. Like I use Kresnik in lots of comments in the videos. I never pulled Kresnik. Who can replace him? And a lot of times the answer is like... No one really, because he's really good at what he does. Well, now you can get him immediately. Um, well, you can get one copy immediately. Hopefully, you bought his fragments from the VIP shop, and you can EX1 him right away. Um, if you didn't, it's going to take you two Clash of Wills. But uh, how about you, Cotton? Do you have any of the... Are you missing any of these fan units? No, oh, I actually lucky. I was actually lucky enough to get all of them, whether on purpose or off-banner. 
but for me, I think if you have Pesnik already, and you don't have Venera, Lara, or Hawkeye, and so you're missing a very high potency breaker, I think Kakira would be another good option for her 89% rates. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I use Kakira very often as well. Um, honestly, on this list, Cacteria and Kresnik are the two I use by far the most. And yeah, that I would say that is that is absolutely the priority I would go for. If assuming you owned none of these, Kresnik is first priority. I would say Cacteria second priority. Maybe Bulba. Yeah, Bulba. Yeah, Bul yeah, killers and imbues. Mm -hmm. He is very very good as well. Um, they're all they're all pretty decent. Uh, Noppy and Behemoth is really good as well, but uh, if you have Maeve, he's a little bit less useful. Uh, Noppy, as much as I love Noppy, and Noppy might be great this season because he's not a, or she is not a human, um, which might be really, really good. Uh, even so, overall, Noppy's damage, you know, got upgraded. Not enough to be important, in my opinion. Still good. Uh, That's the damage in all the frames. Noppy uses SR. No... Class unit uses SR. That is true. Maybe Chow will. Maybe Chow. Maybe Chow will have uh, SR. And actually, King Behemi does as well. Although I have a strong feeling this this month, uh, it's going to be a magic cover fight because I mean Chow is the mm -hmm. Chow is the unit, so it's it's going to have to be magic cover. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so all these units are just really really good. Grab the one you need. For me personally, like it's a good thing, but also unfortunately. I have every single one of these at EX3 already, except for Yigni. So I'll be buying Reclaim Serenity as the first priority. After I buy that, I'll be grabbing Yigni's to EX3 him as well, because I'm, I'm two copies away. I'm EX2 plus two extra. Uh, so that'll be fir first first month I'm buying this, assuming I have an off-banner more in the next two months, it'll be two more copies of Yigni. That'll EX3 him as well. So. Hey. Question, Zinza. Mm -hmm. You know how with the units you can exchange two copies. What are the odds we can get two copies of Reclaim Serenity? Oh man, if there's two copies of this in here, I mean, I'm absolutely buying both, one thousand percent. I'm buying both of those before buying Yigni. So if I can only afford, you know, if, if this costs the same price as the New Beasons base, which it may, because it is so so good. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm definitely buying two. I'm buying every copy I possibly can. With, with the drops. If that takes every single drop from Season 3, I'm buying every copy of Reclaim Serenity because Resist Gear is just too good. It is just too good. You need all you possibly can. So I'm, I'm going for as many copies as we can actually afford of Reclaim Serenity. That's me. And I really, really hope that um, on Season 4, they bring back the other materials. This is only two out of the four. Uh, Life for the That's Purge... Good. Yeah, Life for the Purge the was one, of them. one. Yeah, the killer. Yeah. And there was um there was a, a different resistance one that gave like magic mm -hmm. and resistance. I forget I forget the name of it, but it was really good as well. I didn't get it from the banner cuz it was kind of overpriced on that banner and I didn't go for it. But um being able to get it from the Clash of Will shop, I absolutely getting it from that. So okay, that's basically it for this week. So hopefully you have amazing luck on Divine Beast Chow Cotton. Hopefully, I do as well. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be going for him. It does depend on the data mine. If the data mine comes out and Chow is a complete dud, then I guess I'll skip. But they've been overall pretty good making the new global exclusive units. So I, I I have high hopes for Chow. Hopefully, he's gonna be great. And if he's even at least sort of decent, I'll be going for him. Uh, Cotton's probably gonna go for Chow no matter what. <laughs> so so. Oh, so hopefully you get him, so do I. And thanks again for joining me, Cotton. No problem, Stinza. I will miss Charles News Day for the world. Indeed. All right, so we will see you guys on Thursday. Later.